Hello. Welcome to this episode of A Creative Approach Podcast. I'm your host, Karen Poirier Brody. I'm delighted today to have as my guest Eileen Hull of www.eileenhull.com. Eileen is a crafter and a designer and brings a determined approach to getting the job done. She comes up with brilliant solutions. She is also a craft adventurer with a very creative approach to teaching crafts. Please visit the website www.acreativeapproachpodcast.com for show notes and links to more about Eileen and A Creative Approach Podcast. I often mention the weather. We are fascinated by weather here in the valley, probably because we do not see a lot of change in conditions from day to day around here. It was sunny and lovely for our recent Thanksgiving holiday, but we've now had some rain. Because of so many drought years, we welcome rain. Though I must admit, I prefer when it comes at night and leaves us our sunny days. Some recent showers were warm and not so helpful for our California environment, but it looks like conditions have changed. More cooling rain means snow in the Sierra, which is what we need to avoid drought. It has the added benefit of excellent ski conditions. Storms do impact travel, but the mountain road crews are fantastic and get the traffic through. I have chosen to halt my peripatetic pattern at the end of this year to take time to celebrate the holidays and my, oh dread, upcoming birthday with my family at home. Actually, it's not dreadful to commemorate another year. I'm glad to be alive. There's much to savor every day, no matter the challenges. I mentioned holiday decorating on my last show intro. It's in full swing here. My son Joe embraces the job as his birthday and Christmas present to me each year. He does a fantastic job. The outdoor holiday lights are up, though we need a rain-free afternoon to perfect them. The tree is in the sunroom, and we have repaired the bulbs, except for one pesky strand that we are investigating. It's nice to have a pre-strung tree, but it can be challenging to find the problem when a strand is not lighting up. The house needs some major organization, but Advent is a season of preparation. So like in the spring, it's cleaning time. It's also time for knitting and projects. You know I love fashion, and it can be expensive. I found some designer looks for spring that I love, but do not fit into my budget. I'm hauling out the sewing machine, and I'm going to try to make some knockoff versions. I finally finished getting the sparkly buttons sewn on my knit coat, and I will post some photos over on my Patreon page and the Facebook group page. If I am fortunate in my versions of spring fashions, I'll post those pictures too. I too enjoy finding a way to make things like today's guest, Eileen Hull. Let's find out about her incredible talent in today's conversation. Hello, and welcome to a Creative Approach podcast. I'm your host, Karen Poirier Brody, and my guest today is Eileen Hull a very creative person and someone I'm glad to call my friend. And um, I'd like to say welcome, Eileen. Well, thank you, Karen. Great to be here. Yeah. And of course, I just touched on the fact that you're a creative person. Um, Well, and you create some really uh, nice products, uh, Mm -hmm. which... I own one or two. (laughs) And uh, I'd like you to maybe tell us a little bit about what it is that you do in your creative life. Yes, I would love to. Although actually, I haven't done a whole lot lately. I was on a trip. um, And that is part of what I do. First of all, I design dyes for Sizzix. It's probably what I'm best known for. I've been with them about 10 years now. Uh, I also have a line of inks with clear snap that are, um, they're called blends. They're in kind of a innovative, um, packaging. So, um, I like to think about stuff that isn't there and create it. So that's kind of how the whole scoreboards dies, which are kind of my specialty 
Um, they're dyes that they're structural dyes that create um, packaging, books, boxes, uh, folders, and they're made out of material that is thicker than paper. So uh, when I, I I did a lot of work with mat board, so um, I love matting and framing. I had all the tools, and after a while, I had like piles of mat board left over because it's such sturdy, rigid material. I started making things with it, but the problem was that you had to measure it every time you had to get exactly the right pressure. So you didn't cut through and it was hard to get like a consistent product every time. So, uh, that's when I went to Sizzix and I asked them if there might be a way they could make a dye that would produce this same, you know, accurate and consistent you know, product every time. So we did work on that together and, um, we came out with these scoreboards dies. And so I've been designing them now for 10 years, which is really fun. And you would think, you know, <laughs> do you ever run out of ideas? And sometimes, but not really, cause it's, it's like a puzzle to me. So it's really fun to create them. Um, and I for already forgot the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to find out what it was that you did in well, I wanted to let our listener know. I, I mean, I have a general idea about some of the things you do. And of course, explaining, you know, a dye um that's available that people can buy in their local craft store that will mm -hmm. help them cut out these products and make right. some really cool structures, like you said, mm -hmm. um, books and uh you have one that's really intriguing that's like a little sewing kit with drawers and things yes. right yeah oh. they they can be quite involved yes that was one of my um <laughs> most challenging ones to design because when i get my well i have to work within a structure so you know the die is 13 by 6 inches big so that's got to go through a machine and cut the end product so i have to figure out how to get it to the right size and fit it all on this die to create the, you know, the box or whatever it is. So I had this sewing box that my grandmother had those like kind of uh, accordion ones that kind of lift out a cantilever, I think they call it. And, um, so I, I kept working on this design. I would bring it upstairs. My husband's an engineer and I would show it to him and it had hinges. It, it was kind of one of the more complicated ones I've done. And he kept saying, nope, that's not right. I'm like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and I had to go back down and, you know, try it again. And that one was a very satisfying one to finish, I will uh, say. <laughs> I guess so, if you had all these repeated times. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had to cut them all by hand because I didn't have a die. So they have of six course. little drawers in it. So you have to cut all those, you know, every time, which made you be more accurate <laughs> because you didn't want to cut them. But yeah, of course. Well, that's the advantage of a die too. For anyone to yeah. try and do that on their own would be mind boggling. Right. Good luck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> have fun with that. Yeah. And we don't have your expertise at putting all these three dimensional objects together. Yeah. Well, I figure if I've done all the work, let everybody make them. <laughs> you know, Indeed. share the wealth. <laughs> well, I yeah. think that's the fun thing about dyes. If you want to make something yeah. and you want it's a little bit intricate, and you want to make a few of them, especially right. for parties or for yes. gifts or uh, just yeah. to have uh, a right. few objects, exactly. it's really nice to be able to mass produce those sorts of things. Yeah, and be sure that they'll be reliably turning right. out that you could actually yeah. accomplish this. Yes, I love that. And <laughs> the way I look at it, too, is, you know, you're working on blank white mat board or cream mat board. So it's really a blank canvas for you to put paper on it, metal on it. You can emboss it. You can ink it, stamp it, stencil it. You know, you can put your spin on it. So you have the basic structure and then you can make it look however you want or it can hold whatever you want. So there are just a lot of possibilities for dyes in general. But um, oh, especially yeah. I think for mine, because they're they're more of um, I don't want to say an heirloom, but you put a lot you put some work into it. So <laughs> you want to keep them for a while. So, you know. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Because even yeah. if the machine does all the accurate cutting, you still have to assemble it. Yeah. But they're but not once you have 
the die and the yeah. basic structure. Oh. It's just a matter right. of a little time. Right. A little time, a little double-sided tape and brads maybe, and you're good to go. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, each one's going to look unique because as you said, you can put your own spin on it. Right. Yeah. And so you've been doing this for 10 years. I, I think we'll get to some of these other intriguing things about you. <laughs> but um, okay. it, it, how many dyes do you make a year? Um, about 12 a year. Wow. Uh, it depends. Uh, that's not really that many. There, You know, in the height of all the frenzy of dyes before they really became so popular, uh, I was doing maybe, you know, 16 per collection, which was twice a year. Oh, and wow. that is a lot. It's a lot to keep up with. Um, yeah. I have a design team of we're up to 16 people on it. Uh, and then I have a lot of people who just like to, you know, send me show photos of what they've made. And so just to share all that is like a huge job. <laughs> and a great job. But, yeah. you know. So having only six is like you can kind of concentrate on focus on them instead of more, which uh, is kind of a relief, actually. Well, so, the uh, listener might not be familiar with what a design team is. Uh, you mentioned that. Uh, so I thought maybe we better fill. Yes. Um, pe some yeah. people will be familiar, but some won't. Right, right. Well, a design team is a group of people who work with a certain product to show showcase that product. So. I have these 16 people. They're located all over the world. Um, they're amazing artists themselves, and they are so great. I mean, they, I send them product. Uh, you know, Sizzix sends them the dyes, and then they create um, kind of show pieces using these dyes. And so it gives inspiration for other people who may not know what to do with it, um, and it has a nice community feel to it. We also have a, um, an Eileen Hall fan club, which was started by one of my team. One day she calls me, she's like, Eileen, you need a fan club. I'm like, I really, I'm a little old for a fan club. She's like, Nope, <laughs> you need one. So, I said, okay. So now we have, um, we may have 1700 people in it. We're on like one away. So, uh, it, you know, and it, in this group, well, I'm a fan, I should join that and make your 1700. <laughs> well, there you go. I mean, you could be welcome to do that. It's a Facebook group. You go to Eileen Hall fan club, you request to join. And, um, I'd love if anybody wants to be a member. Um, and in it, we just discuss, it's kind of behind the scenes, a little bit of, um, maybe some more personal things or people that people have questions about how do I do this or what's the best glue for that? Or I taught a class and here's what we did in class, you know, using the dyes. And, uh, it's really a nice, um, like a safe place to go and share your work. Oh, it and sounds like a lovely community. It really it does. Is. Yeah, that sounds great. And you're not, obviously, I don't know that there's an age limit on being a fan. No. <laughs> That's true. It just yeah, sounds too. like, you know, like the monkeys or, you know, <laughs> a fan club or something. Oh, I, I am sure the Rolling cool. Stones still have many yeah. fans. <laughs> yeah. And he looks amazing. <laughs> He'll go. I, I, and yeah. you're not near that old. <laughs> anyway. Well, I don't know, but <laughs> I'm feeling it. <laughs> well, I think we all do. But of course, yeah. uh, <laughs> that that's yeah. just something that happens. But of course, uh, I think that's great. And now I wanted to get first. Well, I think one of the things you brought up already, I mean, there's other things about your creative life, but one of the things you mentioned just in passing was yeah. traveling. And I know yeah. you have a unique way of traveling and very yeah. creative approach there. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that part of your creative life? All right. Well, I have this little vintage trailer called Scotty. Um, the trailer was purchased after a fight with my husband. <laughs> when we, we, well, we have an RV and it's big and bulky and it has like tanks you have to dump and things like that that I don't really mess with. I just sit in there and go wherever he drives to. But one day we were up in New York and we saw this little vintage camper and I said, you know, I want to get one of them. I'm going to blog. You know, I can do my blog posts in there. I could do Facebook live. I could showcase the samples in there and all this stuff and I'll fix it up. And he just looks over at me and he goes, you would never do it. 
So of course that just <laughs> made me mad. And then <laughs> that just I, made you mad, right? <laughs> yeah. I was just like, I, we've been married 33 years, you know, you should do this. It's going to, so anyway, he, and then I did the thing like, you can't tell me what I can think. And I, you know, I'm going to get it. Anyway, he wound up finding one on uh, eBay and there are a lot of them, but they're like, I live in Virginia. You might find one in Utah. Well, that means you have to, you know, fly out there, rent a truck, drive it back. It's going to take a week or whatever. Uh, so we found one that was in Virginia. It was about four hours away. So we went down and I bid on it, which I think I'm the only person in the history of the world that has not bought something on eBay. And um, <laughs> so what you do, you you put in your like primary bid and then you put like the, your highest bid. So at the time, I think I put 2800 as my high and 1800 as my low because I had looked at them online and that seemed to be in line with, you know, some of the ones that I had seen. So it's the day of the auction and I'm sitting there at my computer just waiting and it comes on and the bidding is just goes like 1500 2000 2500 you know it just blows by the 2800 it gets up to $15,000 oh my gosh little, little you know trailer with a leak in it basically <laughs> and, uh, and an so old I, one too <laughs> yeah i i was sad i i just was like wow i was really really wrong about that so i you know i said okay well i started looking again on online and stuff. Well, two days later, I got an email from eBay and they said the top two bidders were not in earnest. So if you want it, you were the third one. If you want oh. it, push the button. So I looked at my husband. I'm like, I'm pushing the button. So that's how I got it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wonderful. <very> <laughs> yeah. So uh, that began the uh, paper trail, which is what my series of trips are called. And um, I toured the country. I set up um, teaching engagements at different independent stores, at events, retreats around the country, and uh, just kind of plot my route. And so I've done, uh, well, I just got back from a trip, which kind of wound up not the way I planned. Um <laughs> That's I always had, a part of the adventure. Yeah, well, well, it was kind of a sad one, but oh. I, I, well, I had a trip to, I was heading to Canada. I had two big retreats up there, and then I was going down through California and around the bottom down to Arizona and across, and uh, I got to Canada. Things were going great. Well, my dad was, um, he was diagnosed last year with pancreatic cancer. So, oh dear. Yeah, but he, he made it. He had the surgery. He did chemo. So he seemed to be doing okay before I left. I went and saw him, and he's like, he loved that I would do this. He just thought it was <laughs> the coolest thing because he was an entrepreneur. And so, you know, to see me doing it in my field, he just liked that. So anyway, I left. The day I left, he had a heart attack. And oh it just my. kind of downhill. So the whole trip, I was like, oh, uh, just waiting. And anyway, when I was in Canada, I got the call from, well, we got all got on a call with the doctor. And he told my dad, you know, he recommended hospice. So that was kind of disconcerting to be that far away from home and, and know. So anyway, I thought, well, I'm just going to keep going and then my sister is a hospice nurse. So I said, you call me when I need to come. So she, uh, called me in Oregon, which what it turned out good. It was my 50th state. I crossed that off my list. It was beautiful, but I hit the Pacific ocean and said, time to go home. So uh -huh. I set off on this trip and it was 2,922 miles and I made it in three and a half days. Oh, my. Yeah. I believe that I made it because I had so many of my Facebook friends and people People were offering me plane tickets. People were offering me their houses to stop. They were praying. They were. They totally got me home. Oh, that's so, so wonderful. Yeah. 
And oh, then, it's know, such a sad but, thing to have to deal with the parent who is um, yeah. dying. But it what was. a wonderful outpouring of love. I know. And then when I got there, I, I was worried that he wouldn't make it, you know. So I'm like, oh, please, dear God, let's, let me get home. Yeah, I got home and I had a week with him. And oh. so I got to help out and say goodbye. And it was really, I mean, I know it sounds weird, but it was really good. And then, oh, no, with, but I mean, having that chance to be with yeah. a loved one, no, that's, you right. know, yeah. you knew it's been a long haul for him. And what yeah. a nice thing that you were actually able to get back and spend that yeah. time with him. It was. And he probably was really happy, as you said, he, he was, was. He, that your adventures well, and he, yes, that he, you were continuing uh, that. Yeah, he wanted to hear. And, you know, when when he did pass away, we were all there. At, I'm one of six kids. Our spouses, we were all there with him. He knew it, you know, and he just oh. kind of went to sleep. And it was, I mean, oh, that's it, nice. if it has to happen, it's the best way you could ever want to do it. So Right. How nice I, that he had all his family there. That's wonderful. That's a good right. story. Yeah. Yeah, I was unable, you know, uh, both of my parents, I was planning to yeah. see them, and I actually missed them when they passed. Yeah. That was sad. That um, they, um, you know, it was just a yeah. weird sort of thing to have planned a trip right. to see them and miss them by a day. It yeah. was really sad. But... Oh. And they were both not things I was actually expecting. So, oh boy, yeah, that was yeah. hard. But I'm glad that you had that chance. And what a yes. nice thing that yeah. you actually got there. And what a lovely story about all the people who were going to help you along the way. Yes. That's great. That is what is amazing, I think, about this business, that it is so personal. You know, we're scrapbooking, we're chronicling things in our lives that are happening. And, you know, I mean, I do a Facebook live show. I usually try to do twice a week with the trips. It's hard. I'll do them randomly. I'll do, Oh, here's the store that I'm in. Here's some of the people that we're talking to. Here's a class. Um, but normally I do a project every Tuesday and Thursday. And through that time, you know, you get these people that are watching, they, they just love what you do. And they're so encouraging. And, you know, then, then they share their stories. And it's more of a, I don't want to say therapy, but it's like, you're making friends. And I know people make fun of that. Like, you never met this person. How can they be your friend? Well, they are, they're praying for me. I appreciate that. And, you know, it's a community is, is what I like about it. And, uh, you know, there, there's this one lady in Sweden. Uh, well, there are a couple of them, um, Charlotta and, um, oh, Anita. And both of them have reached out to me and emailed me and told me about their lives. And, you know, it, it it's really it, wonderful. Yeah. I, I mean, I've noticed that I, I was, there are some people I've made friends online, um, and known some people for years, um, not too long ago, um, I met someone who basically has considered herself my friend for 10 years um, from a group groups that we've been in and shared. And we had the best of times. We sat down to have coffee and it wasn't like, you know, we just sort of picked up where, picked it, up yeah. where we left off online. And <laughs> I, um, I've met even people around the world. Uh, in Australia, mm -hmm. I met up with uh, someone who actually, and I met up with her when um, Lynn Dwyer, who when she came to uh, San Francisco, we got together and had dinner and had fun together. So all over the country and all over the world, it's nice to make these friends. Very and cool. I love the internet for that. I mean, yeah. not only because I can talk and do my podcast and talk to wonderful mm -hmm. creative people, but because of the intimacy of things like Facebook and uh, various groups in um, things that you're interested in. Yeah, it is really cool. It is cool. Now, you also teach other things. I mean, I know that I took a little class from you that you were teaching um, oh, yes, uh, some beautiful handwriting and I need to practice that's that more. Perfect. I'd like to take another class in that, yeah. but uh, oh, you do other things. So why don't you tell us a little bit yes. about some of those fun oh, things? Wow. 
I think I have crafting ADD because I like to do all of it. I just, uh, you know, well, when I was a kid, I, like I said, I was one of six kids. I was the oldest and I have four, there are four girls within five years. So we were very competitive. So whenever anybody would try anything, the other one would have to also, like if one learned a cartwheel, we all would have to learn how to do a cartwheel. So <laughs> it's kind of like one would knit and then the other ones would learn how to knit or one did batik. And so I, I, you know, I think part of it is growing up in um, a family and my mom was and dad were the same way. If they didn't know how to do something, they would just try it. And it was a lot of learning because it's problem solving, which I think crafting is, you know, you want it to look a certain way. How are you going to achieve that? And, um, you see the beautiful things that people are making and maybe you think of another way to get that look or you like it, but you want to change it a little, or it's, it's just inspiring and it gets your brain working. And then, uh, so I, I love to stitch. I love to letter. I like to paint. I mean, I like to try it all. Why not? <laughs> I mean, anything I like that spirit of adventure. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. you teach others when you figure things out, which is great. That's right. And I always learn stuff in class because no one does the same. Everyone's brain works in a different way and you can always learn things. So I think I learn more than they do half the time. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Eileen, the problem learning. solver and learner. <laughs> Well, I try. Yeah. And if you don't, I, and I, I think that, um, you know, as far as my parents, m my mother was a nurse and my dad, uh, was, um, well, he did a lot of different things too. He just didn't like people telling him how to do things. So he <laughs> kind of broke away early on in his life. He was a draftsman and he started buying up, um, old apartment houses and fixing them up and renting them out. And, uh, so that's what I've been doing the last couple of weeks. Uh, now that he's gone, he left it to us. And um, so we're trying to figure out heating systems and things like that. So I really think that the skills that you learn in crafting and can be applied in so many different ways. And I love that, um, that crafting has kind of made me see that, that you can be creative in so many ways. And, and you allow yourself to do it because a lot of times it's like, well, I didn't go to school for that. My degree is in health education. I don't have any training in, um, art or, or anything really. It's just life experiences and saying, well, what is it that I want? How can I make it? You know? So that's great. Now, did you go into health education because your mom was a nurse and she said you have no. to have something to fall back on or? <laughs> well, not really. She, she didn't do it. She had six kids and stayed home with us. So she uh -huh. wasn't like she went back after we were older. But um, I, I don't know why I did it because I started out as a nurse and then realized that I cried all the time. So I pr really probably would not be much help to the patients and I'm not, you know, loving the blood. So <laughs> that was a bad choice. Uh -huh. But, uh, but I, you did education. So you got some training and teaching. Kind of. Yeah. As much as you can learn in college. But what happened was I finished college and I married m this boyfriend that I had, who is now my husband of 37 years, and he went in the army. So we moved all over the place. It was hard to get a job because anybody, you know, he was a pilot. He went to flight school. Nobody wants to hire someone for nine months or a year and a half or whatever your assignment is. So that's how I turned to the crafts because I wasn't able to get a job. And then I started having kids. I have four kids. So uh, I mostly stayed home with them throughout his military career. And it was only when they started they were in high school, I guess, when I started seriously thinking, well, I maybe could make some money at this. And um, I enjoyed it, which I think, I think it's so huge to do what you love, even if it doesn't pay, it, it's worth it in so many other ways. And I'm lucky that I can do that because my husband has a good job, but he'll, he'll come home and I say, how was work? And he's like, eh, you know, well, I don't want to have a job like that. Even if I'm poor, I, w I would rather have some joy in what I'm doing. And I think I'm really blessed that I can do that. So 
Well, I think that's really wonderful to be able to do what you enjoy, but you actually yeah. um, work for a company. Is it? Did oh, they? Yeah. Did you apply for something? Did they find you? How did that come about? Well, I was at a trade show and I was making these little books and folders out of mat board, like I said, and I had done some samples and uh, I took a booth out in this license and design area that CHA used to have. They don't haven't done that in a while, but uh, I kind of set up a little shop of what it was that I did. And I did get some interest, but I found that going to the company that I wanted to work for was the more direct and better way instead of hoping that they might find me. So I did like, it was so scary, but I took some, uh, one sample and I went up to this guy who was walking through the, from Ellison. And I said, I have this idea. Do you have a minute? And it was right before the show closed, but he came over and he looked in the booth and he was like, Oh, I, you know, this could work. So that's kind of how it got started. But I know a lot of people are concerned about people copying their work and ripping them off. And actually, there was kind of a an unfortunate um, thing last night that uh, one of my team found a company that was basically selling my design. And, uh, you know, it's it's hard to not get attached to things like that because they're your baby, you you know, you put a lot of time into designing them and then somebody comes and claims them as theirs and are making a profit on something that you design. But I try not to get too attached to that because I can make more, like I can do more. I have more ideas, thankfully. So, and I think it just kind of poisons you a little that you're so protective of things and ideas that you can't share them. And if you don't share them, nobody will ever see them. So uh, it, it's sad that people do that, but uh, you know, now does, just happen. now does the fact that you work, um, with a comp- major company help in that? Mm-hmm. Do they help in, um, addressing well, this issue? Yes, I hope so. I, I messaged them and said, <laughs> uh, here's this link. I don't know what to do. <laughs> so, uh-huh. you know, I mean, you can write to them and ask them to take it down. I, I'm really not sure. Uh-huh. Uh, it's happened a couple times uh-huh. and, uh, you know, well, there are unscrupulous <laughs> people everywhere and we know that. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, yeah, you really <laughs> should credit people when you um, yeah. do a yeah. project and right. um, use somebody else's product and you shouldn't steal their idea and make oh. money off of things. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> but it's even if you're not making money, it's awfully good to credit people. Right. Well, I mean, the whole thing with social media now, it's social media, like you, it's meant to be shared, not, you know, like if somebody makes something with my dye, I love seeing what they make and I'm happy to share it because to me that shows people more ways to use my dyes and my products. So right. I'm happy to share. It's not like, you know, so holding it into yourself doesn't really do much good. No, it's, it's but somebody thing. shouldn't make a profit off of your no, idea. No, they should not. That's especially. true. That and, you know, I'm, and I'm <laughs> glad you, you know, it's harder yeah. when people make something very personal and produce something in small quantities, like you said, right. you know, well, Etsy or something like that, one uh, of the online places. Pardon yeah, me? Yeah, they're allowed. Uh, there is an angel policy, which yes. means you are allowed to make a certain number. Like, you know, if your daughter's getting married, if you need to make a hundred of something, go for it. You know, you bought the dye. To me, that's why you buy it. You know, it's an expensive thing. So (laughs) to me, I want to make a hundred of them. I want to make a thousand of them. But when you, it's when you make it, and pawn it off as your own, that's like, ah, uh, that's bad. <laughs> right. Or they make a die and in competition with your company and, you know, say that's their idea when they don't own yeah. that. That's just not right. Well, you know what? People know. I mean, they know yeah. and they get it. At, you know, it's just, it'll come back to them. But I, I, <laughs> I can't think so. really... I have, there's so much negative stuff around anyway. I just can't get all, and maybe I'm old. I don't know what it is, but it's like, <laughs> They'll get theirs. I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you certainly are at no loss for ideas, it seems. Like well, you said, you sometimes have a block, but it doesn't seem like that holds you back very long. 
Well, it's the deadlines that uh, <laughs> I respond to deadlines. That is the only thing that motivates me. Pretty much. <laughs> because um, I'm, when I look at something, it's, I always feel like it could be better. So I should wait to send the final because I could be adding one more finishing touch. But when I have a deadline, it's like, nope, it's got to go. So <laughs> that is when everything happens. <laughs> That's like me and term papers. <laughs> probably very, yeah. I'm like always that. turning them in. You know, it's due online at 11.59 yeah. p.m. Yeah. And <laughs> if I get it in at 11.55 p.m., I feel really yeah. good. <laughs> it's <early. laughs> Because <laughs> yep, I, I am a perpetual learner and taking lots of classes, uh, and I'm afraid that I do wait till the very last minute on a lot of things because, you know, you yeah. want to get your ideas together. <laughs> no, and you want to pack everything that every day can hold into the day, and you want to do it all. So <laughs> it gets that done. Must be but, something, you know. <clears throat> that must be something universal to crafters trying to. Maybe get everything in in a day because I think yes. that's my life too yeah yeah <laughs> I, I like that that you you know you can relate to everyone I yeah. do have a friend who was just here and she's she is very uh proactive and I don't know how we're even friends because you know we work in totally opposite ways but you know she'll prod me and I'll say oh calm down or you know we we <laughs> we kind of uh, buffer each other a little bit. So I think that's good, too. But in talking to a lot of the people that I've taught along the way and that I've met, it does seem like a lot of them are like us. And it's interesting when you go to teach a class because and I think that this is um, I've kind of found this most of the classes, either someone wants to make it exactly the way you did you know, they want to have exact the same materials, the same colors, everything, or they do nothing like what you did. <laughs> <laughs> They're off on their own. So it's funny to see all of the different personalities and to kind of, when you first meet them, you say, I wonder what kind of person that is. And you can usually tell. <laughs> and it's great. But that's fun. It's just fun it to see how yeah. people... And then I think... And there's nothing wrong with trying to make something exactly the same way. Because yeah. in trying to do that, I think you learn a lot. You do. And you it do. can help you to make things more yeah. creative on your own later. So I don't think that's a bad way to approach things. No. Now, I, I have the failing that even if I try to do something exactly the same, I have yeah. a tendency to error. And mine will never look... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but again, that's how you learn because you of say, course. oh, I did that. I should have done this. So, that's you know, true. I'll do that next time. <laughs> or sometimes the mistake is even better than the the right way. So, you know, yeah. you learn either way. Exactly. Oh. Or and maybe it's not the right way, but it's the original way or Another the, way. the other approach. <laughs> <way>. <laughs> and yeah. um, now... <clears throat> So no formal training in art. I mean, have you ever no. taken any art classes? Uh, well, I like I like to do my version of art, but you know, it's not formal. Uh -huh. I just know what I like. What I I know what I like to make things look like, and then I just try to make it look that way. However, I get there, and it's always a different way. But uh, <laughs> you know. Like I look at the lettering and I think I like that, but I would probably, you know, slant it a little or I would do this. So then I try to do it. So, okay. um, I, I don't know what you call, I mean, I have taken classes I've taken cause in the military, um, we moved, I don't know, 15 times and wherever we went, I would take a class. I took basic calligraphy. I took basket weaving. I took painting. I, t you know, different mm -hmm. faux finishes or whatever it was that the area was uh, offering. You know, they would have classes at the on post or in stores. And it, it is fun to learn. It was fun to get out from the four kids every once in a while. And, <laughs> you know. <laughs> now, are so, your children creative people too? Are they inventors? They, in their way, they are. I have one daughter that does jewelry. One is a photographer. One likes to do DIY. My son, um, he is creative, I think, in his work. I don't really know. He's uh, he's in the Army also, and I'm uh, not really sure what he does there. I can't know, but um, I think he is pretty good at it. So I have to think, 
you know, if you're a creative person, it should be throughout your life. Because if you have that skill, why not let it spread throughout everything you do? So I, I think they're creative. I, they're pretty funny. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that makes for some fun family stuff. (laughs) Yeah. I can't wait to see them at Thanksgiving. Yeah. I think that the, um, had the sense of humor is probably the thing that carries oh, most families through, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And of course, we appreciate yeah. each other's humor because we have our little history together. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's fun. And so now you mentioned um, CHA. Now that's the Association mm-hmm. for Creative Industries right. now, AFCI. Yeah. And um, that's one of the uh, places that you um, trade shows that you <laughs> participate in. And um, then if people are looking for you, um, you would be at some various things on your tour with mm-hmm. Scotty. Uh, <laughs> and so yeah. I think maybe we should give people an idea of where they can find you online. And you said yeah, Facebook, so- why don't you give me some of those yeah. and we'll put those in the show notes. Yeah, that'd be great. Well, my blog is at EileenHull.com. Uh, that's where every week we have three to four to 10 projects that are used from my team. Um, and we have different themes. We do collaborations with other companies, um, to use their products and our products together. So, uh, every week we have a blog post with all these different ideas and I'd love for you to go check out my team. They're amazing artists. Um, I'm on Facebook, Eileen Hull designs. That's where mainly I post when I'm on my trip. I try to do a recap every night. Um, I have been kind of dealing with stuff from my dad lately, so I've been a little quiet, but I plan on getting back because I have a, re- a new um, line from Sizzix coming out in December actually called Book Club. And that's kind of a spinoff of the books and different journals that I have been um, working with in the past The in the past release. It was like, ooh, that went pretty well. Let's continue with the book theme. <laughs> so uh, I have a new line of dies coming out, and I'd love for you to take a look at them. They're at Sizzix.com. I'm not sure exactly when the you know formal release is, but it'll be on my my site. Um, I'm on Instagram, Eileen Hull. I do the Facebook Lives every Tuesday and Thursday. So if you go to Eileen Hull Designs, you'll see when the next one is. Hopefully today I get we'll get one together. <laughs> um, you know, I don't always know what we're going to do, but we usually do a project. So I will hope to have something. And um, where else am I? Well, on the paper trail, um, the last one was a, it's a two month trip. So once I'm on the road, I, I post there and you can kind of follow along and I might even stop by and see you. I've been known to do that. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you know, we met up down in San Diego. That was fun. It was. Yeah, while I'm on the road, it's like I might as well meet as many people as I can. So, you know, sometime I'll just put a thing out, you know, I'm going to be here having coffee. Come on by. Right. And (laughs) stranger things have happened. (laughs) And it gives everyone a chance to see your darling little Scotty. You've outfitted that so beautifully. Yes. And and now internationally, you can take it to Canada and Mm -hmm. maybe who knows even Mexico, but you certainly couldn't do that anywhere else in the world. Have you done any international traveling? You said you have people all over the world. Well, I've seen them on Facebook. I haven't been there, but I would love to love to go. Yeah, Uh, (laughs) you can't exactly take Scotty, but. (laughs) No, but you know, you can rent little caravans or whatever in other countries. I really would like to get to the UK because uh, I've recently gotten to be friendly with quite a few and th- uh, three of my team members are over there. So, uh, mm-hmm. but I'm excited because they're coming to CHA to AFCI. I have to remember to switch over now. <laughs> um, right. But I'll be there and we'll be in the Sizzix booth uh, demoing. So that'll be fun. And Oh, it's great. So you'll have some people from around the world coming to see you. Well, oh, well. Let's hope that you can <laughs> yeah. maybe set up a paper trail in some place. Like the UK is wonderful. I was just there yeah. in, in May and oh. June and it was so beautiful. I know. This is your year of travel, I hear. 
<laughs> yeah. I I spend almost like six months away from home. It's really crazy. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> and inspiring to one's creativity. Yeah. It's nice to be home. And of course, yeah. Thanksgiving is coming up and the rest of the holiday. So that's, yeah. that'll be great to be home. Yeah. But travel is fun and yeah. um, expands the mind and gives you some new yeah. ideas. Yes, it does. I love it. And speaking of ideas, well, you mentioned a little bit about creativity and how it can um, be in every part of people's lives, and it doesn't just have to do with crafting or art making. And I was wondering if you had any sort of general thoughts on creativity. Hmm. Well, I think it comes when you least expect it, (laughs) (laughs) which you better have a notebook nearby so you can write it down, because in the middle of the night is when you might get your best idea. And uh, so I have little pads all around the house with a pen <laughs> just in case cuz uh yeah i think well i think it's kind of a way of life um to just be open to what comes across your path and how it might relate to another area of your life or a relationship or anything i mean i think creativity is about being open to anything and applying it in maybe an unusual way or um, a new way. I don't know. Um, I Well, figuring out your own way maybe to solve a yeah. problem. I think yeah, I get that out from you. Your own way to do something. Yeah, I think that's creative. You know, well, <laughs> here is one very boring example. The other day I had gotten, um, it was one of those shark you know, those vacuum cleaner things that you do your wood floor with. Yeah. Got (laughs) it. Yeah. I love that too, but (laughs) I ran out of the solution or the little thing that you're supposed to put in there to make the, you know, to clean it. Right. So I went online and I just Googled, you know, shark cleaning stuff or whatever it was. (laughs) And (laughs) there was this free recipe for how to make this shark cleaning solution and it was like vinegar and water or something and I I don't know there were probably some other secret ingredients and you know I just filled up the little thing and put it back in my shark and you know so if you don't have the stuff on hand figure out another way to do it or whatever you have or figure out another way I think there are always there's like 25 ways to do one thing so isn't it wonderful having the internet I mean really you can look up almost anything on YouTube Do you have a YouTube channel? You didn't mention that. I do. Yes, I do, but I'm not very good at it. I've been doing a lot (laughs) of the Facebook Live, Uh and so I use that more because – and it was interesting. We had uh, a woman who wrote in and said, you know, Eileen, if you would stop saying hello to every Tom, Dick, and Harry, you would get a lot done a lot faster. I don't have time for this. And it's like, well – you may be more of a YouTube viewer (laughs) because (laughs) we have a community and the beauty of Facebook live is it's live. We interact, we talk to each other and I, that's why I like it because I don't like to just sit at my computer with a screen, you know, and I'm talking to my camera. So I think there's something for everyone. And, uh, and actually what we did figure out a solution for that lady. So I said, when you see the camera go down, watch it on replay When you see the camera go down, that's when we're going to do the project. So just turn it on and watch from there. So we had a creative solution to that problem. (laughs) (laughs) Very uh, good. Yeah, (laughs) that's great. But yes, I think YouTube (laughs) is more where you can do that constructive video. But it's very helpful for people. And of course, uh, now I'm just exploring a video to see if that's something that I can do. I hate the editing seems difficult to me and I know oh. you can do it in your phone but I found that oh. really challenging See, that's <laughs> but why you do, if you do Facebook live you do it and it's done you don't <laughs> edit it's live you have the best excuse in the world I've this done a couple live. of those they are fun and you're right it's done you, it's not yeah. perfect but then of course it's well, live what can you expect what that is life. It's not perfect. If you mm-hmm. make a mistake, you figure out how to fix it and you keep going, which is my life. I mean, that is, I, 
I can't edit. I just, it's just keep going. I keep swimming. No, well, I get that. But you know me, I have yeah. to know all yes. the ins and outs and details and yes. really learn it and study yes. it. So that, Which that's is what my approach. what should do. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, I think winging it has its merits. Yeah. I've done that too. <laughs> it's like well, coming home when I was a physician at uh, 830 yeah. at night and having my son well, say, well, you know, I need a costume for the play for uh, tomorrow. <laughs> My goodness, Michael's closes at nine. I really got to get over there. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) So there are many occasions when even if you like to be very involved, you have to just wing it. (laughs) Yes. Yes, that is true. (laughs) Well, you know, Eileen, it's just been, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. And this has been a real delight. And I'm so glad you were willing to come and be on the show today. Oh, hey, any time. All right. Yeah. Well, very All right, good. I'm, I'm coming by with Scotty next time I'm in California, and we'll go for a ride. Hey, that sounds like <laughs> a great treat. All Wonderful. Right. Well, thanks again for joining me here on the Creative sure. Approach Podcast. Thanks Take for care. <laughs> you too. Thank you for joining us at a Creative Approach Podcast today. Show notes from today's episode, where you can learn more about my guest, Eileen, are available on the webpage, www.acreativeapproachpodcast.com. You'll find links to our past shows and show notes for those episodes available there too. Also, please feel free to share your thoughts and comments with me on our Facebook group page. A Creative Approach podcast website is where you can see our affiliate links, and also you'll find a Patreon page with periodic stories from me and a place where you may choose to contribute to the show. A big shout out of thanks to my Patreon donors. I hope you're a subscriber to the show on your favorite platform. And please do leave a review on Apple Podcasts if you join us there. Thanks again for listening. I hope you will join us in future conversations as we explore a creative approach.